Hi, this is Brandon Harris with TheUrbanGeek.com. I found a few Easter eggs within the iPads OS and I like to share them as well as a few tips and tricks that I have. The best thing that I found actually in, uh, I guess Apple wouldn't want us to actually know this and it seems to be an oversight on their part, is that if a website embeds a podcast or an MP3 within their page, that MP3 can be played and while browsing other apps and browsing other uh, other browsers as well. So I'm on the ESPN.com page right here and they have embedded a podcast, a free, free agent talk. Okay, so I'm going to hit play. I'm not sure if you can hear that. Okay, and that's still playing. Now, what I'm going to do is go to another browser. Oh. Go to another browser. And that same podcast is still playing. I'm going to leave Safari. That same podcast is still playing while I'm browsing other apps. That is a major Easter egg and an oversight on Apple's part. Now, I would like to also show you uh, how I use Facebook on the iPad. Uh, when you go to Facebook.com, it automatically goes to the regular browser version. It does not default to the touch version of Facebook. This is a little clumsy with using um, the iPad. There are a lot of things that just do not integrate well with the iPad. And being that there is no Facebook app right now, uh, using touch.facebook seems to be the best alternative. This is what iPhones usually go to while they are browsing Facebook, but it is not automatic within the iPads OS. I would definitely recommend using this version. It's a lot easier to use and it's more functional for your fingers to, to use. So that's touch.facebook.com. Okay? Uh, your experience with using Facebook on your iPad will get tremendously better. Another thing I'd like to show you that a lot of people haven't realized yet is that within the Photos app, you can actually use multi-touch multi gestures that you cannot previously use on the iPhone. Now what do I mean by that? I mean you can do things like take a picture and spin it around. You know, this is something that I just came across the other day and it's I think it's just really cool. Um, people, you know, it's not so much of a functionality thing but people just love taking pictures and spinning them around. It's just fun to do. So uh, that's another thing that I figured out. Okay. Uh, one other thing I'd like to show you is, uh, let's see, is how to quickly mute uh, your, your device. There's no mute button being that it has been replaced uh, by the screen lock button. But if you are playing some audio, and I'll play audio from this podcast again, I'll go all the way up. If you hold this down for two seconds, Bam, your device is muted and you can start it back up again. What kind of sucks is that you have to start from the bottom to get back up to a normal playing volume. But it's a, you know, it's a useful feature. So hold down the volume button for uh, about two or three seconds and your device will be muted almost instantly. One more feature that uh, I have noticed on the iPad with browsing Moving around websites uh, is a lot different than moving around websites on the iPhone. Uh, you could never before pinch, zoom, and move the web page at the same time. Uh, this is a brand new feature, and it also kind of gives a glimpse into where multitasking could eventually end up for uh, the iPad's future OS's. You know, they're letting you zoom out really considerably uh, on one page. So. Pinching to zoom and moving is something totally new to the iPad OS, and it's a nice little tip for you to see. I don't know what that is, but that's weird. All right, thanks. Bye. <laughs>